and welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where in this video, I am reviewing, spoiler free, Goro Miyazaki's From Up on Poppy Hill, one of the more recent Studio Ghibli films. Now this is the second film from Goro Miyazaki, who is the son of Hayao Miyazaki. His first film was Tales from Earthsea, which was a moderate financial success, but a critical failure. Moreover, there was some sniping between father and son, which further muddied the waters. This film, instead, appears to be more of a collaboration between the two, which is one of the things that makes it more interesting. Poppy Hill is actually an adaptation of a manga. By the way, about half of Studio Ghibli films are adaptations of books and manga. Anyway, it adapts a, a manga set in 1963 in the bustling port city of Yokohama. It combines a high school romance story with a look at student life in 1960s Japan. This was a time of great change in Japanese society, which the film hints at in several ways I'll get to in a minute. As expected, the animation in Poppy Hill is smooth as butter. Almost perversely, the story seems to center around scenes with a lot of characters all moving around at once, big crowd scenes. And moreover, the characters in the, in the, the scenes are sort of moving around and within each other, sort of like fish in a stream, which is very difficult to animate, and it looks perfect. Of course, there are also no anime visual cliches, sweat drops, anything like that, and all the characters move with a natural realism. One thing I appreciate about Goro Miyazaki's style is his use of small, silent action, even more so than his father. Characters furrow their brows or lean in towards each other, or just sit waiting on a bench. It's something of a third way between broad Disney animation and movement everywhere and the more static, stereotypical imagery of typical anime. Goro's distinctive style also carries over into the film's pace. This story covers months in the characters' lives and it unfolds at the steady, slow pace of real life. The characters deserve mention because they're not typical anime heroes. They're not even typical Ghibli protagonists. Umi is a reserved, serious girl who runs her mother's boarding house while her mother is away. She lives a quiet life of routine and seems completely content with this. Shun, her schoolmate, struggles to keep the school's newspaper alive. And he has this drive to him that gives him an intensity of focus. Nothing can distract him. Neither of these characters are looking outside of themselves or their own interests. Now this may drive away some viewers. These are not the worried, tentative uh, characters of, say, The Cat Returns or Spirited Away. Neither are they the brave heroes of, say, uh, Castle in the Sky or Princess Mononoke or even Kiki's Delivery Service. That's actually what I like. These are about quiet people who are drawn to each other because they are quiet, introverted people. Now, all of this is happening in the context of 1960s Japan, when the prosperity of the 50s blossomed into the great Japanese economic miracle of the 60s. You can see that in several places. For one, Yokohama is a bustling, thriving, very living city. Lots of things happening. Lots of people doing work. Secondly, about halfway through the movie, and again, no spoilers here, but the students hold a rally to um, try to get interest in saving a beloved school building. Now this evolves into a near riot, and this seems to me to very much presage the actual anti-government student riots of the late 60s and early 70s. You can kind of see where that came from in this passion here. And perhaps most tellingly, um, later on in the film, several students travel to Tokyo to try to convince the school principal to um, uh, do something with this building. Now, think about that. You have teenagers, you have children, who are approaching a, an elder figure, someone who is not only a successful person, but also an elder, trying to convince him to change his mind. This is the idea that someone's opinion matters no matter their station or their age. That's very progressive, especially given Japan at the time. And that's only one side of the storyline. There's also the blossoming relationship between Umi and Shun, 
and a wall that abruptly comes between them. But again, no spoilers there. And this gets back to Goro Miyazaki's style. This story unfolds plainly at the plain pace of regular life. Goro does not construct an artificially melodramatic story where big things are happening to the characters. This is about normal school life. These events pound and recede like waves on the beach, just like normal life does. So if that intrigues you, you might want to check out from up on Poppy Hill. That's it from me. Thanks for watching.